Eric Packer, Naturopath, New Zealand. Thanks for being here and looking at my channel. Let's talk about the five stages of candida overgrowth. You'll probably see a lot online about the two stages, the three stages, the four stages and stuff. The five stages, and I'll tell you why. It's the accurate way to describe the linear progression of a yeast infection from beginning right through to full blown, right? Now, I've seen a lot of people, I've seen a lot of symptoms, and I generally see them like this laid out. Good video for people who wanna know what stage they're in or where they're going, okay? So listen up. The first stage of a candida problem is always the cause something happened all right many people have got a yeast in their gut living as a natural okay commensal it just sits there and it sort of operates with the bacteria and not everyone has got candida by the way most people do but some people have got such scant levels of candida albicans in their gut that it's barely detectable whereas others by default have a larger amount that's kept again in check by bacteria all right but this could also explain the reason why how some people get very easily upset with the smallest lot of antibiotics. It may take them a year to recover from one round, whereas other people, they can take multiple rounds, you know, every couple of months, and they're sort of okay, and they bounce back quick. So antibiotics affect every single patient I've seen differently. Some people are devastated just from one or two doses. So the cause is the first stage. And it's the stage really where most people never suspect it to be a cause because after all, they're going to somebody who's got supposedly the best interest at heart. They're going to a doctor, a medical doctor. They're getting a medication by a professional qualified person and it sets off a chain reaction, either for good or bad. And in many cases, it's for bad, but the person won't know that at that point. So that's stage one. Stage two, the gut becomes altered. The digestive system starts changing slowly but surely over time. It's getting cold in here, I'll be changing over time. Off you go. I don't want to turn into an icicle. It's getting hot here, guys. It's summertime. Um, the gut changes. Now, the gut can change quickly or slowly, but in many cases, it will slightly alter little bit by little bit by little bit after the antibiotic. You'll get death of certain types of bacteria. Sometimes you'll get death of a lot of bacteria, but guess what? Just got a cramp in my leg. The yeast don't die, okay? Because the yeast are not nailed by, of course, the antibiotic. The yeast thrive with the antibiotic, so they start taking off. Now that growth depends a lot on that person at that time. It depends on the diet. It depends on the desires and aversions, what that person likes to eat, what they don't like to eat. So sometimes the candida growth can take off in weeks, it can become rampant. Other times it can take months, months and months, but a very slow, slow progression. So as the person slowly develops more digestive problems, they'll notice things like a bit of indigestion, perhaps a bit of bloating, maybe a tiny bit of bowel change in the beginning. Often there'll be gas production, things like that. But here's the thing that occurs that no one really thinks about is that the appetites and desires change, okay? The yeast is calling your name. Peter, or Jill, feed me, I need more, I need a donut, something like that. So you'll be thinking, hmm, I feel like a little snack tonight after dinner. And that's what I often look for with patients is what do they like to eat and when do they like to eat it? If they like a sweet meal, if they would kill for something sweet after a meal, it often means a yeast infection, in my opinion especially if the person's never had that. <coughs> and if that desire increases more and more and they want larger portions of ice cream or donuts or candy or whatever it is they want, there could be a problem. Watch for the person who starts stopping their car and going into a shop to buy a snack. Watch for the person who uh, is having a drink of something and then wants a dessert or something sweet, those sort of things. So little telltale signs, all right? So the gut will become disturbed. The brain will start telling the person that the gut needs feeding with things that normally it hasn't been fed with. The yeast, the yeast infection progresses slowly but surely gets more and more and more. Digestive systems become more apparent now. There could be diarrhea or constipation. There could be alternate bowel motions. There could be, well, that was burp. Not a real burp, but you know what I mean. There could be indigestion. 
you, at that stage, a person could be thinking about going to the doctor or going on medications, often self-prescribed from a chemist. Ah, uh, sorry, you got a bit of indigestion. Just take this Rolaids or take these terms or something like that. And so then the person will start on some kind of pill or something, and they could be on that for a while. That's stage two, the gut. Stage three, guess what? Now we're looking at more physical changes. The yeast infection is now setting in. Now it's digging its heels into the body. It's reproducing. It's creating candida toxins. It's affecting the immune system. The immune system is getting log jammed. It's starting to work on that yeast infection. The skin could be a little bit itchy here or there. Or Hang on a minute. Gee, my ear's itchy a lot lately. I wonder if that's a yeast infection. You know what I mean? It could be the ear. The person's always doing a little bit of this, or they've got one spot in the body where they keep scratching, or they think, hmm, I've got a white patch on my skin. I wonder what that is. And, oh, well. So the skin problems could become worse, and then the lady will say, my vagina's itchy. I've got this vaginal problem. <clears throat> I'll go and see the doctor and get some monostat, and it'll go away. But it's not going away. It's staying there, and it's getting worse. Oh, we better get some fluconazole now. <clears throat> Next thing, the person's on fluconazole, it becomes a cycle, or the guy's got jock itch. And then he looks down to the ground and he can spot one of his toenails. He's got a fungal problem on a toenail now, right? Or on the finger. All these things slowly become apparent over a period of weeks and months. All these little things. <laughs> sinus problem. Many people get AFS, allergic fungal sinusitis. I did many articles years ago, I wrote for magazines, uh, when we had health magazines years ago, on AFS. I think I wrote a two or three part series on it. I had allergic fungal sinusitis for seven years, I had a sinus problem, until I got a tooth pulled out um, that was dead, and it all cleared up, and it was a fungal problem, it's gone. I tell you, it's hell on earth having sinusitis, it's hell on earth. You don't want bad sinus problem for years on end. You can't swim, you can't fly in planes, you just, it's hell. You can't smell anything. You're sneezing, you're blowing your nose, you've got constant pain in your face. If you're watching this and you've got a constant sinus problem, think about a yeast infection. <clears throat> if you've got a constant vaginal problem, think about a yeast infection. If you're constantly a guy doing this, think about a yeast infection. Uh -huh. Everywhere the hand goes and it moves like this, it's often a yeast infection of some sort. My father-in-law cut his finger about 30 years ago when he was working in a meatworks. Doctors are completely at loss what it is. I told him to go and see a dermatologist. They told him it's a yeast infection. So nails, skin, groin, scalp, all sorts of peripheral body parts could start becoming a problem now. The gut's playing up and the periphery's playing up. You've been to the doctor two or three times. You've been told to go to a psychiatrist. In 1990s, what many people don't realize, there was a New York doctor that had his medical license taken off him because he actually told the patient they had a yeast problem that needed treating, a candida problem. The guy was stripped of his medical license. Not anymore though, because now doctors realize that candida is a serious problem. But when I was a young guy, I mean, you're, you're a psychiatric patient if you talked about candida. So we go on to number four. Now we're starting to get emotional problems and cognitive problems. We could be brain fog in the mix now, just to spice it up a bit for you. We're going to get anxiety, we're going to get depression, like I had. We're going to be going to a doctor, after doctor, after doctor, after doctor, who says there's nothing wrong with you. We've done all the tests. We've taken bloods. You need a psychiatric assessment. Now when someone tells you that, how do you think you feel? You start thinking that you're a looney tunes, that's what you think. You start talking to your mother or father or your sister who says, for goodness sakes, listen to the expert. What do you know about candida? You know, you're imagining all these things. So that really makes you annoyed inside. So you get anxiety, you get depression, you go down, you get brain fog, you can't think anymore. You start having problems. And the last one is you start developing fatigue, bad fatigue, chronic fatigue. In some cases you develop, a secondary, and in many cases you do. It could be an autoimmune disease, um, you could have any type of problem now. Ow, sore knee. So many different things occur as the condition winds up more and more, it compounds. It compounds with psychiatric effects, compounds with cognitive effects, 
all of these things are layers upon layers upon layers of dysfunctions. And where do they start? The cause. If you can get the cause fixed sooner rather than later, you don't have to go all the way down to the bottom to number five, do you? So those are the five stages of Candida. I hope you got something out of that. Thanks for tuning in.